Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to look at the, the follow-up to my last video about why I didn't believe in the, the doctrine of the Trinity. Now I'm going to tell you why I believe God is one. Well, simply because the, the Bible says so. Not only does it say it in the, in the New Testament, but it's all over in the Old Testament. And we explain why, because it's important for God not to have his people going around acting like pagans believing there's more than one God, and sacrificing humans and drinking blood, and terrible, disgusting things like that, right? Now, before I give you my top 20 verses here, let's just give the backdrop. I'm going to start off in, in Deuteronomy. We're in chapter 4 here. This is right before Moses uh, dies. He's giving the longest speech in the entire Bible. It starts from about Deuteronomy chapter 5. <clears throat> goes all the way up to, what about chapter 30, 31, something like that. Anyway, let's have a look at Deuteronomy verse uh, 32. He's recapping Mount Sinai, what happened when God appeared. And uh, he's asking, "Is ask from one hip side of the heavens to the other, has anything like this ever happened before? Uh, where a, a God has taken a nation out of another nation and made it his own? No, of course not. Try pulling that one off at the next family reunion. Hey, remember the time we were down by the lake and God appeared to all of us? And people would be like, what? You, if you made something like that up, people would call you out on it and your religion wouldn't last. So only Judaism makes that claim. No other religion can claim that God spoke to the entire nation. All right? Either you believe in it or you don't. Now, and this is a very important, verse 35, Deuteronomy chapter 4 here. You were shown these things so that you would know that the Lord is God and there is no other besides him. <sighs> hmm. Now right away, you know, there's one guy in the audience that wasn't paying attention and he's going, so does that mean God has a sidekick or two that he, uh, you know, could come down in the flesh and get us to drink his blood and son that doesn't have the same thoughts as him, the same will or the same power? Hmm, do you think that's possible? Number two, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. Hmm, what do you think he means by that, one? Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I, I am he and there is no God besides me. Number four, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. Moreover, the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. So the Lord is, God is one and he's not a man. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere here. First uh, Kings chapter eight, verse 27. Asked, would God dwell on earth? Of course not. First Kings chapter 8, verse 60. All the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, and there is no other. Let's have a look at a few verses from Isaiah. Let's see if Isaiah believes in a trinity. Isaiah first, verse 43, verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen so that you know and believe and understand that I am He, and before me no God was formed, and there will not be one after me. I, even I am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. Hmm, wonder what he means by that. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 43, verse 12. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I, not some foreign God among you, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God, Yet from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. Here's a long one. This is one of my favorite ones here. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me there is no God. Who that is like me? Let him proclaim it. Could you picture some guy getting up and saying, What about... What about a guy named Jesus, born of a virgin? And, you know, he's kind of like you, isn't he? Can you imagine that? He would have been stoned right on the spot, probably. Anyway, uh, is there any God besides me? No, there is no rock. I know not one. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Thus says the Lord, the re your Redeemer who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord, who has made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens who by myself spread out the earth. 
Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. This is what the Lord says. He, he created the heavens. He is God who fashioned, he who fashioned and made the earth. He founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. And he says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 5. With whom will you compare me or count me equal? Is somebody? I dare you to raise your hand right there and go, well, there, there could be somebody else, you know, come along later on. Yeah. Uh, it's, take your chances. <laughs> Just don't stand next to me. Uh, let's look at a few more here. We got uh, Hosea chapter 13, verse 4. Yet I am the Lord your God ever since the land of Egypt. You know no God but me. For there is no Savior besides me. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Then you will know that I am present in Israel and that I am the Lord your God and there is no other. Psalm chapter 73 verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but you? And on earth I desire no one besides you. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy real quickly here to wrap this up. My last two verses that I want to present, or actually the last one's got a few verses, but we're going back to Deuteronomy here, back to chapter 4, verse 12, <clears throat> all right? It's talking about when they stood at Mount Sinai. Do you remember that in Exodus chapter 20, that little incident, greatest miracle in the whole Bible? Uh, or one of them anyway, probably taking a nation out of another nation. That's got to be one of the top three biggest miracles in the Bible, right, in the Old Testament. Anyway, it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Moses says, You heard the sound of the words, but you saw no form. There was only a voice. So who, there's no voice. So why are people trying to draw pictures of God? Well, I think he, I want my God to look like this, and I want my God to look like that. Have you ever seen an ugly picture of Jesus on someone's wall? No, of course not. It's always handsome, white, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus, six-pack, chiseled features. You dig what I'm saying? They want their gods to look like how they want them to. All right? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15. Since you saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you out of the fire at Horeb, that's just another fancy word for Mount Sinai, be careful that you do not act corruptly and make an idol for yourselves of any form or shape whether in the likeness of a male or female or any beast that is on the earth or bird that flies in the air or any creature that crawls on the ground or fish in the waters below. Just don't do it. Hmm. What do you think he means by that? Do you think he means make statues of fish and men and hang them on our wall and venerate them and venerate them and worship them and adore them like they're something worthwhile? They're worthless garbage. They're idols. You know, it's one thing to have a statue of something in your home, but to tell your children, hey, this is God. Pray to it. Believe in it. Here's what he looks like. Worship him. Not me. Have a nice day.